Let, let me, let me come back fine. to you in a minute. I just want to just refocus a little bit on the uh, proteasome inhibitor question. So my understanding from market research is 70% of patients are still getting bortezomib up front and only about 10% are getting curfilzomib. Although it sounds like in the academic set that's starting to switch. The vast majority of our patients we're seeing have had bortezomib. Um, so the choices are really curfilzomib or exazomib if, if you're going to use a proteasome inhibitor. Um, wh what Are you using curfilzomib at relapse, Tom? Or? Yes, so curfilzomib for sure. I think exazomib, especially if patients are bortezomib um, refractory, has a very low response rate. I, I don't think exazomib is a good choice, but carfilzomib, yes. And actually, Dr. Costa um, presented data today with a really neat combination of uh, carfilzomib with venetoclax. Um, yeah, let's save that one until we're going to get to venetoclax in a bit. Okay. Um, just uh, carfilzomib, just if we, we alluded to the Arrow study, which showed that once weekly carfilzomib could be used effectively. Do you want to comment on that, Faith? Yeah, so um, certainly. Um, the, the once weekly carfilzomib is at the higher dose. So, um, so we're at the 70 mg per meter squared rather than um, the 36. Um, Do you, is that dose you're comfortable with using? Um, so um, we, I've used it quite a lot. Um, I think that maybe for my older, less fit patients, I, I do come, I do a bit of extrapolation and um, we can then argue that I don't have a clinical study to support my once weekly dosing at the lower dose. Um, but um, I maybe come down to 56 or 36. Um, to really going on what we were talking about earlier is being um, tolerable and maintaining, maintaining patients on treatment for a long period of time. Raphael, are you using weekly curfilzomib? Do you worry about cardiac issues? What, 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 what no, I, I actually have uh, changed my practice for most of my patients weekly curfilzomib is because of the ARROW study. I was a bit uncomfortable with the CHAMPION study before, but I think the ARROW study has the numbers and actually the comparisons at uh, CHF are quite comparable actually between both arms. So I am confident. I, I think uh, comments that Dr. Davis makes are very important. So I do use it at 70. Unless they're in combination, I go down to 56 even in the fit patients, so 56 if we're going to use KPD or KRD weekly. and on the weekly schedule, yeah. And I think one of the things people always talk is high dose. No, it's not high doses. We don't know the right dose for carfilzomib. It's like saying you have a car that can go faster. You just don't push down on the, on the gas pedal, right? Carfilzomib is more active at higher doses. We saw that with Endeavor when they were using it at, at the 56 in a head-to-head -head comparison with bortezomib. Again, so we're, we're, we're kind of ganging on bortezomib. But it's a better drug, and I think it's well tolerated. So 70 single agent, don't use a lot of that. 56 in combination once weekly. Do you ever use 27 nowadays? Uh, when I forget not to use the right dose. Well, I do sometimes <coughs> if it's an elderly patient. If I'm, I'm, you know, particularly in combination. I, was, I think it's too low a dose on its own, but yeah. uh, in combination, yes. So the Arrow trial, just for the audience, compared the standard FDA dosing of 2027 with 70 weekly in it. You know, I was part of the study, and the, the intent was really just to show you could give a more convenient dose with equivalence. But in fact, the weekly dose was actually slightly better in terms of response rate and progression-free survival. So probably a, a good thing for patients all around. Well, it's probably important we clarify the carfilzomib dosing because there's a little bit of confusion around that. So the FDA-approved dose initially for relapse was 20 milligrams per meter squared in the first two days, and then... 27 milligrams per meter squared thereafter uh, on the twice weekly dosing schedule. Uh, your understanding, Tom, for the uh, next approval, which was in from the Endeavour study, which was carfilzomib dexamethasone in relapse, what the dosing there, could you remind us? Yeah, sure. It was 20 milligrams again day one and two for cycle one. But day eight, nine, 15, and 16, it was 56 milligrams per meter squared of carfilzomib. So then ongoing twice weekly at 56 milligrams per meter squared. And the third uh, study that went to the FDA is the once weekly, which is uh, compared 2027 with, with 20 to start, but then 70 weekly. And again, that would be the weekly dosing schedule uh, for those patients. Uh, up front, Raphael, you alluded to the fact that the dose is slightly different again. Yes. So, so to in clarify, in patients that we use carfilzomib weekly in combination, I scale down from that 70 to 56 if we combine, say, with an IMID, which is the most common combination with lenalidomide at that point. In weekly dosing. In weekly dosing, yeah. And I, I'd like to put in a, a comment here for our colleagues in the community. Occasionally, because of how the treatment plans are designed, we do see some patients who occasionally are kept at 20. So it's important to make sure there's that escalation. 
uh, beyond that 20 that you get on, on uh, right at the beginning of treatment. And the 20 is really a sort of a test dose to make sure exactly. nothing, nothing bad happens and then immediately escalate up. Uh, do you use a lot of hydration with your curfils? In the Certainly in the first couple of doses, I, I do hydration. Do to, so, then, so I tend to give, so I'm not entirely sure what the FDA <laughs> and the label says, but I tend to give half a litre beforehand. So, uh, it's quite a lot of fluid. I, I give a little bit less, actually, 250 maybe. Yeah. yeah, our standard is 250, but I think patients either have more renal involvement and I'm concerned and I will go up to 500, or if I have any concern for cardiac tolerance, I will cut back. And the last dose we should mention, which was the Aspire clinical trial, which was uh, the combination of curfilzomib, lenalidomide, dexamethasone, the dosing there was 36 milligrams per meter squared after the first test dose of 20. So, so, sorry, so it was 27, I'm getting confused again. Uh, it was 27 milligrams per meter squared in combination with lenalidomide, but many of us would use 36 milligrams per meter squared in those patients because I think that's a tolerable dose. I think going forward, um, I think all of our plan is really to switch to the weekly carfilzomib do uh, dosing. So it's really 20, cycle one, day one, and then subsequently, if it's in combination, it's 50 milligram, 56 milligrams per meter squared weekly, or if it's just with dexamethasone, it's 70 milligrams per meter squared. And we've, we actually have d data with Dare2Mab that you could still keep it at 70 milligrams per meter squared. So with IMIDS, it's 56. With everything else, it's 70 weekly. I think that's the best way to clarify. If everybody moved to weekly, we really just have two doses now, which is yes. going to make life easier.